Hi, this is Peter Teuscher. I'm here with Toby Demker. Thanks for joining us for another podcast where we like to talk about personal development, a little bit of professional development, and even a little bit of philosophy. So thanks for joining us again. Toby, thank you for joining me. How are you doing today? Well, thank you for having me. I'm I'm doing well. I have a bit of a cold, so if maybe my voice is a little bit weird today, but um, I'm here and happy to, to, to be joining you for another talk. Excellent. You sound fine to me, so... Um, we'll, we'll plug on. Actually, I wanted to start with the, we haven't done the segment for, for a while, but uh, afterthoughts, because I had some afterthoughts after our last conversation mm-hmm. um, talking about uh, changing perspectives. And I thought um, I, it reminded me of an Einstein quote um, that uh, I had to look up and I'll probably still not get it 100% right. <laughs> but uh, Einstein asked this question uh, about the, the most important thing we need to decide is whether we believe we live in a friendly or a hostile universe, right? Mm -hmm. And I think when we talk about, um, you know, looking at things from different perspectives, I think that that question in itself is a really important one for, you know, when you when you consider the the lens through which you look at the world. Um, Mm -hmm. So, you know, do I see the universe as a friendly place? Do I, you know, it's it's kind of like when people take the the whole Darwinian view um, and make it this this extreme where they talk about the survival of the fittest and they mm-hmm. they see the world through that lens and then they think, you know, everything in nature is dangerous and you know it's just dog eat dog and you and and they mm. then they translate that to the you know society and so on. I think those kind of perspectives can give you a very a negative and pessimistic view of the world. And so like Einstein, Einstein you know, in, as in his quote, if you see the world as a hostile place, mm. it's going to affect your perspectives on things. And so anyway, I just wanted to throw that in there because, mm. um, yeah, I, it didn't come to mind when we were having our last conversation, but it, yeah. it kind of stuck with me a little bit afterwards. But isn't that the could argue that that is like the greatest gift that that we humans have although we we seldom use it but it's that power with that that power to to choose what perspective we're going to choose or the 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 paradigm that we want to adopt it i mean saying that we could go back to the big sort of philosophical debate that started 2000 years ago or something are we born you know objective bad or evil or good Mm. And yeah, depending on what kind of stance you take there, well, if is it is does everything just happen because how, the way we're born, or do we as human beings have the power to choose the way that we see things and choose the way that how we should behave in a certain situation, etc. And we know from that, I mean, ne- neurology that a lot of the reptilian sort of in- instincts that that they kick in when we become when we come under under pressure, but. I mean, we. I think we talked about this a lot. That when when it comes to to adult development or just a personal development, to utilize that power of being able to stop and choose. Well, wait a minute. Okay, so how will I tackle this situation or this? Yeah, or this challenge. Right. Well, it's just like mm-hmm. anything. To, to to be able to to make clear choices or to be able to gain a new perspective, it, it requires a level of awareness, mm-hmm. self awareness, the ability to reflect, and so on. And so, um, yeah, I agree with you. I think that's that's a, an amazing tool that we have that we that is very highly underutilized uh, <laughs> in in some people. So, um, anyway, didn't want to uh, didn't want to stay on that too long, but um, yeah, it was a, just a a cool point that I wanted to throw in there. So today, it's my turn to have a topic, and <clears throat> I've been I've been thinking a lot about the, the effect that our environment has on us, and so and how mm. much control we have over it, and, and and I wonder if people recognize sort of the environment they create for themselves, um, and and we can talk about this on, on many different levels today, but the, the, we, you know, we look at, um, we, we see ourselves sometimes as this independent, um, you know, kind of navigator of life. Uh, and, and obviously, we're all interdependent on each other and so on. And, um, the, you know, there's some people who will um, take responsibility for things that even that aren't their responsibility. And then there are other people who will blame other people and be a victim or so on. And, and <clears throat> so I, I, am a big proponent of people holding themselves accountable, but mm. also recognizing that, you know, the, the things around you, the, um, 
you know, the, the things that you, you, situations you immerse yourself in, the people you surround yourself with, the kind of setting that you have for yourself, the, all of those things have a really big impact. I mean, there's a reason why big companies will invest in, you know, in creating a, a good environment uh, for, you know, their employees. So they're, because they'll be more productive, they're, you know, more cooperative and, and so mm-hmm. on. Uh, and I think the, the really forward thinking companies will, will do that. Um, whereas, you know, if you have a very sterile environment, you know, what's that doing to your creativity, to your ability to problem solve, to your, mm-hmm. um, to, to a whole number of things. So, um, so yeah, so that's what I wanted to talk about today. The, the impact of, um, our environment, uh, on you know, on our happiness, on our well-being, on our you know, uh, on, on our state of mind. Mm. Yeah, that's super interesting. Um, I immediately st- started thinking about <clears throat> about the importance of context when we're talking about leadership development, and that's something that I always say. That and one of the things that I think is so interesting about leadership development is that we have, I mean, there are theories and models of what good looks like. I mean, what, it, what does effective leadership look like? We, we kind of know what that looks like. But even though you apply this theory um, in, in a certain situation, it's not a, it's, you're not going to be guaranteed a, a good result because of the context and the environment is always different, right? Mm. And there is this, um, uh, I think it's a Swedish uh, scientist that he's been adding sort of aspects of the the physical environment and the uh, social environment or the social context to uh, different kind of leadership models. And uh, just stating that it has such a big impact on the output of what we, um, well, the results of of, um, of what we implement. Mm. Uh, So depending on, I mean, you can do exactly the same thing in two different in two different contexts or two different environments and get two very different results, even though you're doing the exactly same thing. And I think that's really it's just interesting to think about that, how nimble and sensitive and sort of sensing you have to be when it comes to the environment and the impact that you have on others and also that that the environment has on you on as an individual. Mm. Yeah, and I think you, when you talk about the workplace, you know, people will talk about oh, it's such a hostile environment and so they want to leave whereas other people thrive in 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 very competitive environments. Um, mm. so again, depends on you know the perspective that you see it from but um, but I think the question that I that's important to ask is is it the right environment for you? So so when and and for, by environment I don't just mean um, just the you know the the situations that you're in whether it's you know what kind of uh, like having a think about having a beautiful home you have a beautiful home like think about the the, the your living conditions um, or at, when you go to work do you feel how, how does it make you feel to be there or how do the people make you feel but I, I for me it goes even beyond that with um, you know what kind of information are you allowing into your environment? Like some, some people, you know, we were, before we got into the conversation, we were talking about, um, I was, I was telling you about how I, uh, feel the need to reduce my intake of news. And, and I was mm. thinking back to, you know, when I was, before I came to Europe and I was traveling, uh, through Asia for six months. And in that time I had virtually no, well, I, I, almost never watched any TV um, unless I was at a place with, with a TV and it was usually kind of a watching movies, but I, I didn't really have any access to news. And, and when you think about it, there are people who probably don't remember that there was a time when there was the six o'clock news or whatever, and mm. it, there wasn't the 24 hour news cycle. Uh, and, and so I think part of your environment is also the, the information and the stimulus that's in your environment. And, and I find, uh, I found for myself, even, you know, uh, during, um, you know, d- during the, the, the period we've just gone through where we were su- for periods locked at home and you want to keep informed. And so you, d- mm. you, you kind of go down this rabbit hole of information and, uh, or you're, you're constantly getting updated and it's constantly negative and, and what effect that has on your psyche. I mean, uh, it's hard to be emotionally positive when mm. all the news around you is, is negative. So, mm. so I think the the stimulus around you is also an important part of the environment that 
that that needs to be reflected on and and if you have control of it you know um how what what's the what's the dosage you want to give yourself because it's one thing to be informed it's another to be completely inundated and immersed in in something and mm. um and if if you're immersing yourself in really negative topics that that's going to have negative effects mm. Yeah, that's interesting how you, if you physically change your environment, I mean, you remove yourself from a certain physical environment, how you can perhaps, I mean, this is just a hunch and a feeling that I have, but I really feel like if, if, I, if I put myself in another physical environment, I get another, again, perspective on things or I get another way of looking and dealing with things and which might lead to a totally different way of solving a problem right i mean there's so many people that are starting to appreciate just going out for a walk during lunch now just to get away from get away from the screen for a while and, and then you come back and you have a very different way of attacking the problem or thinking about the problem or the, the where your social context like who are you sort of bouncing ideas with who are you debating with communicating with to get other perspectives and get access to to different kinds of information so i i really do believe that that proactively seeking to change your physical environment from time to time is very very beneficial absolutely when you think about um, talking to people about time management and stuff like that and 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 you know working uh, productively, uh, you know, a lot of it is how's your work state, the area where you work, how is it chaotic? Uh, mm. is it, uh, you know, how, and, and, and so that environment certainly makes a difference. Mm. Um, so, so I, I think you can think about the physical environment at your workplace, at your home, uh, where you spend a lot of time. I think that has a, a big influence. Um, and as I said, you know, the, you know, the, the stimulus that you're getting and, and that is this not just like cut down on the amount of, you know, we, I think, you know, it's pretty apparent now that social media has its negative sides and, um, you know, makes people, you know, when you're, I'm not on Instagram, but if you're, if you're on some of these, um, you know, you know, from China, TikTok, and, and people will post how great their life is. And it makes you feel, you know, by comparison, bad about your own. I think that, that I see that as part of the stimulus from in your environment. And another thing is the, the, the kind of people, you know, we, we talk about in organizations about culture. And I think um, you, you can, these cultures that develop, I remember when I first came to Germany, um, I, I've, it, I got the impression that people here complained a lot. Because in Canada, mm -hmm. you know, you, some people will complain, but if you're a chronic complainer, people will kind of eh, don't talk to me. They, they, they'll, mm -hmm. they'll, you know, you'll 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 get together with a bunch of guys for for some beers, and if 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 you start complaining about stuff, they'll be like, oh, the hockey game's on, uh, you know. <laughs> and and so, um, you know, people don't want to hear chronic complaining, and uh, you mm -hmm. know that that's just at least my perception from growing up in Canada, mm -hmm. and and so. But now that I've been here for a long time, I guess I don't know if I just don't notice it in my, as much or, or, or whatever. I'm not as sensitive to it. And then I wonder if have I started complaining more than I used to, you know. Uh, mm. So so the environment uh, has an effect because, the, you know, culture is also part of your environment. Yeah, and and sure. so uh, so I think, you know, the people you surround yourself is also part of your environment. And and how how is that affecting you? I mean. There's, I've talked to people and they, uh, they, they, they say, well, you know, I got to spend time with these people. They're my family, you know, especially around the holidays, mm -hmm. even though they don't get along that well and causes a lot of conflict. And, you know, some people, they're better in small doses or, you know, uh, you, you love them from afar, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I think those are important things to, rec to recognize and reflect on. And understand if the people in your life, whether it's in, you know, on a professional level, you know, you're, you don't always have a choice of who you get to work with. Mm. Luckily, you and I uh, do, or we kind only of. work for, <laughs> work with people for short spurts. Um, but, uh, but I, I think w when you have control over the types of, like, if you, if you, there's a group of people you meet with regularly, and you find that the input you're getting from that group, it doesn't have to do with any one individual, but the input that comes from that group is negative and bringing you down a level. Mm. I think it's a, it's a relevant question to ask. Are, is, is this good for me? Is this healthy for me? And sure, the same, yeah. same in a workplace. I mean, if it's, mm. if you dread going to work every day because 
the 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 culture in that organization brings out the worst in people. That's mm. also you know an environment. And look, I'm I'm I speak from a yeah, very privileged position of being able to, you know, um, you know, working in good environments and and hopefully being someone who helps facilitate better cultures and environments and companies. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, the, not everybody can pick and choose where they go to work. Um, sure. So yeah. it's about well, what things can I adjust? What levers yeah. can I pull? Right. So. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about about change a lot and personal change before, and, and I think we've talked about the, the the importance of shaping your environment and able to be successful, or as you say, f- to facilitate that change. I mean, the way that we set up our physical environment, but also I hear that a lot with people that you know the the social environment that I wanted to leave, they were holding me back, so I had to actively change my social environment and able mm. to 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 make that change yeah and i think that's something that's what it takes and when it comes to i think keegan talks about this and, and when we're talking about adult development to when to reach a higher level of consciousness or a higher level of thinking or or just viewing your world sometimes that means that you have to let go of things that you that you kind of have been holding very dear and that can be a very painful process hmm. so i'm i'm not sitting, saying here and that everybody should leave their friends but no <laughs> sometimes there might be situations where the social or physical environment is holding you back from what you want to enter or what you want to explore or come into right yeah and i think you have an opportunity to you can be an uplifter in a group i mean if you have the opportunity to to change the culture to bring to have a positive influence or if someone's uh, a complainer or they have a negative viewpoint or whatever you can be that positive contrast you can you can lift people up to your level or you can be dragged down to theirs and i think that's the question to ask I mean, mm-hmm. I, you know, look, maybe super enlightened people. I, I think that happiness is an inside job. And, and um, you know, there, there's when you're really good at, at making yourself at, at finding authentic happiness, it's you'll be that way independent of your external conditions. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, <clears throat> I don't think most of us have gotten to that lofty level of uh, enlightenment to, mm-hmm. to be able to walk through the world and 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 be calm and happy regardless of what's going on mm. around us so i i think that um th- that's why i think until until we get to a point where we can be completely independent of what's going on around us uh then you know it's important to remember you know the the context that we're putting ourselves in and are we you know creating the conditions in our life that are that are going to allow for the the most success and the most happiness, and I, mm. that that's an important one for yeah. me. Well, I think you could also what could argue that when it comes to leadership, that that's what it's all about mm-hmm. to creating conditions for other people to be the best they to for perform sure. at their at their best. And how can you create these both social and and physical conditions for the people around you? I mean, that's not an easy task. But you, you, typically, we think about leadership as as sort of being very good at solving a task. But I mean, we could definitely argue that it's more about setting the foundation or creating an environment where others can can be at their best, right? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I think that's a, when, I mean, in our work, we work so much with, I mean, it could be cultural transformation projects or leadership development, but it's all aiming to the same thing. How can we form a better uh, or a more productive or a more constructive um, or maybe even more more adaptable uh, context or environment for us to 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 be able to perform in uh, and of course that's a daunting task because you don't know exactly where it's going to go but I mean in our work it's very much about influencing that process in a positive way yeah well think about <clears throat> the in the context of giving trainings and workshops right mm-hmm. so you want to uh, as a facilitator create an environment where there's openness trust <clears throat> that people feel comfortable and willing to you know uh, open themselves up and 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 interact with one another and um, you know that's that's not always easy to do in some of the some of the the uh, locations we're given to to facilitate mm. from. But um, uh, luckily, for the most part, you know uh, the the companies that are willing to invest in people like us to to do that kind of work, um, 
you know, we're th- usually they also invest in the in the location, the facility. But but um, <clears throat> you you can really tell the difference between. For one, there's the people. You know, w- what kind of people have you assembled to to take mm. part? But but then you know all the conditions around it. Um, and you know if if if, if it's if, if it's cold, if there's really stark walls and you know it's there's not a lot of color or stimulus mm-hmm. there's you know no windows or something mm-hmm. those are those are really difficult conditions to um to feel like uh you can be open creative and you know motivated right so mm. yeah exactly <clears throat> and i i think i i guess i kind of mentioned that but it's i think it's so great when you have the opportunity to be I mean you might be working indoors for a, for a while and then it's just not now we're going to go outside and we're going to do I mean, it can be a very serious topic. It doesn't have to be that you're playing games or anything, but that you're actually doing, having a very serious discussion about something that is very important, but in a co- completely kind of different environment. And that yeah. can be really uplifting and and just, as I said, allowing for, for a new kind of perspective. So Yeah. And I, so <clears throat> I wonder if people even realize how much impact their environment has on them. Like, you know, when whether we live in a city or out in the country like understanding you know the importance of nature in your life right and understanding the uh, the <clears throat> the ability that uh you know being in sort of uh what kind of stimulus like some people really get excited around the busyness of a city or mm. um a crowded streets and they like the all the action and <clears throat> for them that that's an environment that they thrive in Mm. where whereas for other people that's just overwhelming and mm. you know they need to you know and, and and so that's why i think it's important to reflect on what's the right environment for me what's the right environment to to you know to um you know to bring the best out of me and mm. so and that that's everything from you know whatever the, living in the city or um you know the kind of people or whatever i was just thinking about in terms of the the people that uh that surround us and you know how some people will complain or have a bad attitude in germany there's um different types of grocery store chains and Mm -hmm. uh germany's is known for its discounters right so Mm -hmm. they're just very plain looking stores they 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 tend not to have as nice shelving they just kind of put stuff out in pallets but that's why everything's cheap and there's i mean uh there's nothing wrong with that especially you know if you're on a budget and those and you need to shop at those kind of sh- stores but I, I tend to avoid those because i'll be standing in line and then inevitably there'll be people complaining why is the line so long and uh, like and i and i feel so bad for the cashiers who have to work in those places because they just they just seem to like it's not like I'm there often so th- this is not a scientific approach but whenever mm-hmm. I have gone to these kind of stores I, I I have found that um geez the 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 type of people that shop there for for whatever reason and I don't know if it's you know because of their their um economic situation I think if you're always worried about money and you're 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 stressed and you hate the job that you're at and stuff like that I think you know that it would make a lot of people miserable, right? And mm. so, so, so I don't know if it's because those are the type of people that shop there, or, um, or if places where really frugal people, you know, people with a very frugal uh, mindset, um, uh, you know. And I'm not an extravagant person when it comes to giving out money, but when I think about. Um, uh, I, I just wonder if that affects their mindset. And so for me, I just find if you're going in a place, like I will always go back to places with good customer service and where people are friendly. Mm. If, if someone's really rude to me, I just won't go back there anymore, right? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. and, and so, but some people out of habit will just go or out of convenience, they'll continue to go back to these places. And I wonder if you're continually going to places where people are rude to you and unfriendly to you, you know, is that an environment that's making you feel good about yourself, right? Mm. And mm. so, yeah, sorry, that, I mean, rattling on about this this one example out of my life, and and honestly, um, it depends on the the neighborhood, the the shops in or whatever, because they're not all alike. And and mm. certainly, uh, I've I've had good experiences too. It's it's just something that's kind of uh, w- was present in me, and and I was having a conversation with someone else, and they had this a similar experience. Mm. And I I don't want to sound elitist, or you know, I'm I'm too good to like I I I, I shop at normal grocery stores. I just the, these these kind of discounters um, are uh, uh, that's the impression that I've gotten. So. 
I think when you go any place that you find, it, it brings you down a notch to be aware of it. It's not like, you know, sometimes we don't have a choice or sometimes, well, look, it's only five minutes. I'm going to be in and out. And uh, But if you're, if you're spending a lot of time in places where there are people that are bitter, complaining, unhappy, there's tons of negative energy there. And the more mm. you immerse yourself in that, the, either the, it'll drag you down or it'll, it'll have some kind of a negative effect. Mm. And so anyway... That that's that's uh, that that's my experience. Have you had any experiences like that? Do you go places where you go? There's just such a bad vibe here. I just don't want to come here anymore. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, and I think about it. I think I take uh, a lot of those examples, and when we're working with, uh, especially when we're talking about accountability, because in, um, I mean, in certain companies, uh, when you come in, just when you enter the the door, uh, you get a you get you get a vibe, you know. Mm. And some very often it's great. Uh, usually it's really good, but sometimes oh, there's something off here, you know. And I think v- typically, very often before, if I wasn't in, involved in some kind of uh, um, um, state-owned company in China. It was always this sense of, uh, or this lack of accountability, and that could drive me mad. Mm. Um, you know, if I would ask for something, it's like, uh, you could never, you, it was all, only a yes or no answer. It was like some things were not just possible because of, well, that, that's just the rules there are, or, um, you know, there, there's a process to it, and you can't, you can't look over, you can't look past that. So I think the... I mean that's that, that has to do with culture that has to do with leadership but it creates an environment that is yeah just um, unpleasant I would say mm. there's and a, not and not very service oriented yeah mm-hmm. you know actually I'm just thinking of there was a it, it must be 20 years ago now or maybe longer but um there was a time in New York City where you know there there was a, a real crime problem I don't know what it's like now. I haven't been in New York in, in quite a few years. I haven't mm. seen the stats. But um, anyway, there's lots of uh, vandalism, graffiti, uh, uh, and and crime. And then the mayor at the time, and I can't recall who it was, um, but it basically said, when there's a broken window, we're going to get it fixed right away. We're going to mm. clean up the graffiti. Like, we're not going to let stuff stand. And it elevated, the, the, it created an environment where people... The norm was no longer stuff that's broken down and ugly. Uh, it, it, people started to have a sense of esteem about, you know, the appearance of, you know, the their environment and so on. And as a result, crime actually went down. The, mm. the, the, what was acceptable and what was the social norm shifted. And mm. so I think that's that's the power of having that kind of creating an environment that people care about maintaining, that people, um, you know, feel good and want more of, right? So I think that that's one example that comes to mind of how powerful it is when <clears throat> when you make a concerted effort to change the environment, to, to change the appearance, and to change the sort of behaviors that are tied to the, uh, you know, the, the appearance and the characteristics of, of where you live and where you work and so on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think in general, organizations are getting much better to being sensitive around that different populations in their organizations might need kind of different environments. Yeah. I mean, for, for the past few years, there's always been this trend going back and forward of, oh, should we have a like a box landscape or an open landscape or et cetera? No, it's all about open landscape, but in, in a kind of a hybrid format, right? So. Mm. You can find your silent spaces. Uh, you can work remotely, obviously, which is kind of the new trend. But and and in in very creative environments, you might have like a green room for where, where it might be really messy and unstructured and mm. <laughs> very flexible working hours, etc. But certain people thrive in that kind of an environment. So, as an organization, to be sensitive to, towards that as well. So, what is the best? way to fit this population and to make them thrive and to be make them uh, have fun and feel motivated and, and perform yeah i it's uh, that brings to mind i was there was a there's a big company i won't ne- mention their name but i i was um coaching someone there and uh he, he gave me a tour of their like it was a big impressive office but it was mm. great they had areas uh they had areas for employees to meet and network and um, it not the typical. They, they ha- certainly had meeting conference rooms, but they also had kind of places where you could ha- have your coffee break together. You, the places more informal places to meet, or 
places that uh, you could work that weren't necessarily just at a cubicle. Um, you know, you could change your environment, right? If you're mm. sitting eight hours a day in one place looking at a screen, you know, that can feel very stagnant. So, um, mm. so for you're right. For people who are very creative, there, there's a there's a an environment that works better for them. There's people who want more structure. You know, they need a different type of environment. So, but you don't. You, you know, it's it's can be difficult to cater to everyone's needs, but you can add elements of that in in your workplace. Mm. Um, but you know, again, just understanding how how important that is, how much of an impact that has on people. Mm. Yeah, it's really interesting, and, and just thinking then for for yourself, what, what what kind of an environment are you are you fixing for yourself or setting up for yourself? So in order for you to be the best that you can be and i think we all have that experience of you know you you redecorate a little bit or you rearrange a certain mm. thing in your in your living room or in your bedroom it's like wow this feels so fresh <laughs> you know and it, it's i think it's really good to make these kind of minor adjustments from time to time yeah i, mm. I when I, when life gets really hectic for me and i and i put papers here and there and I go, oh, yeah, I'm going to do, I'm going to sort that in a second. Mm. And, uh, you know, when I get out of a habit of filing things properly, oh, I get, it just, it, it causes me so much agitation and frustration with myself, right? When I, when I create chaos, mm. I, uh, I, I just, it, 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 it really brings me up my wits. I, I'm, I frustrate myself more than anybody else. <laughs> and, and so, you know, like, I know better than this. Why, why do I create this chaos for myself? Mm. And, I, and, I re, and I know the environment that I, I thrive in. Um, and, and yet sometimes I still let it slip and I still, and then I can feel my, and then I have to drop everything. I have to sort everything out and, uh, and then I can continue working because I, you know, I feel better. So, mm. um, so yeah, especially you know I you know talking about writing, I think you know what is an environment um, like because I I've mentioned my writers group here in Hamburg a few times, and um, and I think uh, you know when we get together and meet and talk about writing, which we haven't done in ages because of, you know uh, f- for numerous reasons the last few years, mm-hmm. but um, it was always kind of a very social, fun and, and food there and, and comfortable. And and uh, and and it was it was really conducive to sharing ideas and and uh, and then and then listening to people talk about under what conditions, what kind of environment do they need to be creative and write, and mm. um, and so yeah, I'm in, I'm in the middle of doing some renovations here, so my my space here is actually a little bit chaotic, a little bit out of my control, but I, I am creating a new space that I really want to make also have the writing element of what I do, um, you know, be positively affected by my environment. Mm. So, and I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm going to be, uh, uh, I'm creating a little coaching room here in the, there's an office, you know, on the back of my house and, and I'd like to, I'd like to be able to offer coaching to individuals as well, because, you know, I really thrive on, you know, helping people in their day-to-day lives, not just, Mm. not just the, the you know management and so on that's that's mm. interesting too and that's rewarding too but anyway so i've been thinking about what kind of an environment do you want to create for people to really open up be you know interactive and so on so yeah I, i've that's top of my mind for for that kind of you know and and in in this whole process of renovating the house as well it's funny because my girlfriend uh um her and her daughter uh are moving in and uh, and so we we have different requirements for our environment. <laughs> it's so funny, uh, you know, in, in terms of colors, in terms of, you know, I, I'm sure everybody has these, you know, I, I prefer this kind of a look or you have, you know, but, um, but that's especially, I think, in relationships. I think it's important to, to make sure, because I, I tend to be one of these people who, who uh, is like, oh, yeah, whatever, because I, I, I'm not... I don't have a good eye for what the right colors. I after it's all done, I you know I have a sense of I, I like it or not. But mm-hmm. um, but I, I tend to just kind of nod and go, yeah, whatever's you know, and and not give my input. And then after the fact, I'll be, ah, oh, geez, I would have liked it a little different. So mm-hmm. you know, th- now I'm starting to pay more attention to you know, is, is this the right thing for me as well? Because you know, I, I can be very accommodating and so on. 
But then I realized after a while, actually, uh, I really don't like this. <laughs> it really <laughs> bothers me, right? And so, uh, so you you kind of try to adapt and and then realize actually this isn't the optimal space for you. And so, mm. yeah, being being more vocal about what your needs are, right? Um, yeah. If you're creating a, a space with someone, if you're creating an environment together, um, you know, giving some input uh, and recognizing the things that that stimulate you that create you know, um, the conditions for you to be optimized. I think that's yeah. important to know. Like I, I for a long time, I, I didn't know. I, when I was a, before I owned a house, when I had an apartment in Vancouver and I, you know, I was working a lot and I didn't put a lot of care into my living space. I just kind of, mm. you know, <laughs> threw some used furniture together and it's like, ah, it's not a priority for me, right? Um, mm. And 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 now, because my ex-wife, she was really had a sense of her own style and everything. And I and I actually, you know, um, I it was the first time I started to appreciate uh, the difference between creating some a beautiful environment to come home to, right? The yeah. difference that makes. So yeah. Um, so yeah, it's 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 uh, it's worth far more than than I realized previously. Or was yeah, willing. I guess it can be, yeah. But I'm also reflecting a little bit of what we're talking about and thinking about how extremely adaptable we are. Um, I mean, just the example that you took before about living in a, a really bustling city like New York or living in a, out in the countryside, it's, I mean, I kind of experienced both, and it's easy how extremely fast you adapt to either or. Mm. Um, I mean, when I was living in Beijing, it was like, yeah, it was, you know, there are people everywhere. Uh, and it was, ah, this is cool. And then moving back to sort of the suburbs of a Swedish little city, it's like, oh, this is very quiet. And then going, I mean, you, you adapt so extremely quickly. Yeah. But, and there's all, also, of course, there are uh, individual um preferences there as well i had a a good friend in beijing he was a professor and he had in his office it was books and papers everywhere mm. i mean but you could not touch anything because they had a certain kind of system to, yeah. to where everything was and then you step into you know a, 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 a client at bmw where they have a desk a clean desk policy you don't see anything so it's, it's very very different worlds yeah i've read I, i've heard psychologists say that you know the state of your desk is is a reflection of your what's going on inside <laughs> so uh yeah that's that, that's an interesting point um but anyway i i think um yeah we could probably wrap it up there i i I just think, well, I think um, maybe we could. I think we could take a, talk a little bit more about the social con, uh, social environment because I yeah, think that, that's absolutely. really really interesting as well. Well, th th that's mm. what I was trying to point to when I was talking about you know where I like to shop, <laughs> or no, we're yeah. not like not shop, or the people that I have around me, or you know um, that kind of thing. But yeah, I mean, if you've got some experiences or some input on the the social environment, I think is you know that's for me is tied to culture and a whole bunch of related topics. Mm. Yeah, I'm just thinking that you have, at least in, in my personal experience, it's like I have different needs and with different groups. You know, like I have di different groups of people that I enjoy. I, I I enjoy being with a lot of different kind of people, but each yeah, me I too. Guess, each group have a, have a very different. They well, they fulfill a different kind of need. You know, one group is kind of the, the yeah, we have laughter and drink beer together. <laughs> you know, that's that part. Another group might be more the sort of <clears throat> intellectual um, exchange of ideas. Um, one group might be much more about inspiring, inspiration of physical challenges and these kind of things. And family is, of course, one, one unit in itself. But there's there's different, very, very different social contexts. And... Um, I mean, actually, now I started thinking about a Seinfeld episode when um, they're talking about that worlds collide. You know, like and so George, the character in, in Seinfeld, yeah. he has he has a, a girlfriend, and now uh, Elaine, which is George's friend, she yeah. starts hanging out with his girlfriend, and that's a big no-no because worlds collide. Yeah, these worlds cannot interact. <laughs> that's so funny. I haven't heard a Seinfeld uh, reference in a long time because I don't. I don't think it was ever a super popular show in Germany, but that's hilarious. Oh, okay. oh. But so anyway, but the 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 idea that some some of these groups, yeah, they don't they don't necessarily fit very well together, mm. um, and that's fine. Uh, you know, they they don't have to, but. 
just thinking about where what kind of social social context do you have that that give you energy and i think we touched upon that before that in certain situations it might also be that you need to leave a certain social context that, yeah. because it's not good for you yeah um, exactly but that, that's that's interesting uh, you know because we've talked about the diversity of experience and how how um important that is you know both of us having traveled a lot i really love the the experience of uh, you know getting into new cultures and so on um and and so uh, yeah i'd never thought of it in terms of you know changing things up and and requiring different environments to bring out different things in yourself um so th i th i think that's a that's a really interesting point and i think that's um it, it's also that something that changes as you get older you know i mm. i thought uh I, growing up in the suburbs of Vancouver, I thought, I don't know if I could ever live in the city. And then once I lived in the city, I thought, oh, I can't imagine ever living in the suburbs or out in the <laughs> yeah. country. Uh, and now I'm, I've gotten to a point where, um, I, you know, I live in a really great location in, in Hamburg, very green, but I'm still close to the city. But even now I, I'm thinking, actually, now I could see myself living in the country, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, uh, you know, just, just, uh, having a different pace of life. I think, you know, being, um, not traveling for a period, you know, um, w with everything that's happened and, uh, and, and kind of being, f going from someone who travels almost every week to, to all of a sudden someone who's home every day mm. actually made me really appreciate, you know, where I live and, and, and having a very, kind of a little calmer, regular pace to my life, mm. I, I started to recognize the value in that. And mm. so maybe I've just gotten to a point where my life where, you know, th that, 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 that's more conducive. That's more the, the environment that, that I'm going to thrive on now as I, you know, go, go forward. Or maybe that's something for my, for my, uh, retirement. I don't know. But, mm. um, but I, I also know that, I love being near the sea. Uh, maybe mm. it's because I grew up near the Pacific uh, in a city, you know, that was cl very close to the water uh, or on the water. Vancouver's right on the water. And, and, and then I lived in Munich for a number of years. And I, uh, you know, that's a city that's very landlocked. It's close to the mountains, beautiful, got, got, has a lot to offer too. But, mm. but I, I think this is one of the reasons why Vancouver, uh, why Hamburg was so appealing to me as a, as a city to live because, you know that there's uh it, it's it's got that coastal feel even though it's not directly on the water you know the river from the north sea comes comes into the city mm. and you know it's it's um 45 minutes to an hour to to the to the sea to the east sea or then a little further to the north sea and mm. so so you know that's an environment that i know makes me feel good being near the sea if i go on vacation i, I like to you know, uh, I like to go somewhere where I see the ocean or, you know, see the sea. And, mm. and so those are things I've recognized that are really important in my environment. Um, mm. So have you, have you found any things that, that are kind of deal breakers for you in terms of I need this in my environment to, to feel good? Um, I'm not sure. I, I, I think I'm more of a mountain person. I think I've realized lately that I'm more of a hmm. mountain person. I really, there's something spe special with mountains, you know, the feeling of the vastness of it. You make it makes you feel small, but I, I get, I can get a very similar feeling from the sea as well. Um, but I think what, what you were saying there, what, what made me reflect was just, wow, how mindful are we really about our environments you mm. know, and how do we take exactly. that into account? Um, cause as you say, if you're, when we're in busy mode and we're traveling all the time, you, you know, you, it might be a certain week of your life and you're traveling sort of half to the other part of the globe, you know, and do you actually it, sort of inhale any of or, or digest any of that? <laughs> uh, you know, so, so much of the time it's just going into an airport lounge and on an airplane or whatever. And it's like, we don't even care, but taking a moment to be really mindful about what, what kind of environment are you in and what do you appreciate about your environment? Hmm. And it could be just sitting in your office or like the first, I always say that the first uh, sip of my coffee in the morning, you know, mm, it's, uh, it's such a, it's, it's very, very special. <laughs> and my son always, oh, you always say that, but yeah. yeah. Uh, but what I mean is to be, 
to tie this into with mindfulness to be a little bit more mindful about what kind of environment we're having and what we appreciate about it and not just taking everything for granted. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think one of the questions to ask yourself maybe is, um, you know, what are the conditions I'm creating for my myself? What are the conditions I'm creating in my life? Um, so, you know, whether it's I continue to hang out with certain people that um, either good for me or not good for me. I, um, I, I I put myself in environments that are, you know, that are, when I think about the amount of time I used to, go to bars and restaurants and nightlife. And, and now that doesn't appeal to me at all anymore. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, it's nice to meet with friends and go out once in a while. But, you know, for the most part, I, I've become a real homebody. And I find that, you know, I prefer to invite people to my home or mm-hmm. go to visit someone at their home. And, and um, it, it just is an environment that I've, you know, I, I, I don't like big crowds. I, I, I'm more kind of lean towards um, being introverted where you're, you prefer to connect with a small group of people. Mm-hmm. And, and so those are all, those are all things that, that you can, you know, that you can cultivate, you can create an environment for yourself or you can, you can, uh, well, at least where you have control of it, you can kind of, um, uh, and, and, and it's, it's interesting because, you know, when I talked before about, you know, the grocery store choices, but, you know, pe- people have limited means, but even, you know, I've seen people who live in a tiny apartment and have created such a beautiful space for themselves, not mm. with a not with a ton of money or whatever. Or you know, over over COVID, <laughs> over the lockdowns, I was I was watching uh, you know uh, the the whole tiny home movement thing. I was mm-hmm. I was looking at that and and just these tiny, really um, environmentally friendly, but also very uh, uh, practical living spaces that are also very beautiful and, mm. and in an environment. And then, you know, because of, you know, the, the lower cost of a home that way, able to have it in a really beautiful, pristine location, maybe mm. with an amazing view or whatever. So, so um, the people taking control of their environment and going, you know, I can't afford uh, a house, um, but if I get this and if I find ways to work remotely or whatever uh, conditions you have control over, mm. you can you can create an environment for yourself. Um, mm. You know, d- and, and so I, I don't think a, a lot of people, you know, money is uh, obviously it's a limitation, but for some people they, they use that as an excuse um, where if they prioritize differently, they could create the environment they want for themselves mm. if they were willing to you know make some give up one thing to have another or whatever right but mm. a lot of them don't realize that um, you know maybe something isn't that good for them in their environment and they're they're so externally driven by mm. I gotta have this I need to have this as part of my identity right so mm. um, and 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 then to wake up one day and go actually none of this stuff really matters or none of this mm. stuff is really even good for me uh, mm. in terms of the environment I'm, I'm creating for myself so mm. yeah interesting I, I just uh, listened to a talk by Ah, oh, what's his name? Ricardo Saldago or something like that. It's this Brazilian. It's a Brazilian CEO, which was with kind of provocative ideas. Sometimes it's, it's, it's all about self-management and uh, uh, not this kind of extreme agile. But uh, he mentioned in an experiment that he did where he just got rid of all of this stuff that uh, you know that was he thought he was very attached to, but actually didn't really mean anything to him. And that mm. was a very sort of uh, well, I was a liberating experience in that sense that I don't need all this stuff. You know, I just this is this is not important. Who was the uh, Who was the Japanese lady who wrote that book on um, Kondo? I think her name was. What was her? I can't remember her first name, but um, uh, yeah, the, about living simply about. Um, Oh, geez, I shouldn't have brought it up because it's so. <laughs> it, it was just a a little me- a remnant of a memory. But th- yeah, there there was a there was a Japanese woman who who um, uh, the beauty of simplicity or something. I'm I'm gonna bring it up in our next conversation. I'll have to look her up. But yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, she was she was definitely one about creating the right environment and the right space for yourself. Mm. 
Luke okay, yeah, check that out. That would be interesting to hear, actually. Yeah, yeah. when I yeah. when we have a, we'll we'll kick it off. I'm I'm getting back into having afterthoughts after our conversation. So yeah, maybe okay. maybe because it's not so hectic, uh, it's, it's starting to slow down a bit before the holidays. It's uh, it's mm-hmm. good for me to have a little time to contemplate. That's a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So yeah, do we want to wrap it up there? Maybe I feel like I had another thought, but maybe it's. Um, um maybe maybe that's it i think it's it's been really interesting oh yeah it just the the final maybe the final part it's interesting while we're exploring this this topic how uh and i think it's something that we do as coaches but it's such a natural and but also very very vital and very important sort of aspect of coaching to explore this space of of your environment so i think you put it up as um what are the conditions like to make yourself successful in this sense Mm. so bringing that into your coaching uh sort of coaching space as well so asking questions about well what does your environment look like what does uh, how could that support you both from the physical environment but also the social environment to see if there are areas to explore there and uh, and able to reach whatever goal that you you set up for yourself yeah. And yeah. I think the the kind of final thought for me is uh, to ask yourself, how are you contributing to your environment? Whether it's what what contribution are you making uh, to, to a certain, you know, to the culture of a certain dynamic in an organization or a group of people? Um, what are you doing within your own space to, you know, create an environment um, because like I said, you know, when, when I create for myself chaos, it, it, it's just so bad for me, right. Emotionally mm-hmm. and stresses me out. And, and I, I think it's, it's important to see, you know, what choices are you making? What uh, contribution are you making to your environment or to that of other people? I think is an important one to reflect on as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, recognize the choices that you have to make those changes and mm-hmm. it'll, it'll make, sometimes you, you don't, you get, like you say, we're so adaptable. We get so used to the environment we've been in for a long time. And then we, we are supplanted into another situation and all of a sudden we realize, wow, this is so much better. And then we get the motivation to make those changes. Right. Mm-hmm. Or we, we go visit someone who has a, a beautiful home. We go, oh, you know what? It's about time I made some changes in my own place. <laughs> and for, for me, you know, the changes here now, I lived with uh, a space where I was very practical about it because I was not home that much. And so now to, have sort of a family environment and have someone else's opinion on how the environment should be. And I realized, actually, I've been ready. I've been overdue for a change. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I think that that's, um, you know, when, when first renovating the South, I did like a lot of it and, and then, but now is the right time for change. And, and, uh, I, I realized, um, I don't love everything, but I, I love, I love a lot of the changes, uh, and there's there's a, a, enough for both of us to to feel really comfortable here now. So um, mm, so that's right. a good thing. That's a good thing. Mm. All right, great. Thanks for the thanks for, for indulging me on that conversation. Um, well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. You it up. <laughs> so um, yeah, thanks for everyone to for listening. I I hope it's been stimulating and made you think about the environment that you put yourself in or the environments. You know, there's there's home, there's work, there's your free time, and and see what you have control of and what you can um, change in order to make yourself happier and more successful. And, um, mm. yeah, so that's what I want to leave with people with. Um, we've, uh, I think we'll, we'll have one more session before the end of the year. Um, so, mm. uh, Toby's got, I'm sure something very intriguing to talk about. Um, when we, yeah, when we... we'll see if it's a wrap up of the year or, um, whatever. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about something. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thanks for, thanks for joining us, everyone. Thanks for, thanks Toby. And we'll talk to you very soon. Thanks. Bye. Cheers. <laughs>